Hello students, this video we're going to continue looking at how we can uh, model further with our finger box that we have started. Uh, in this video we're going to add a lid and also talk about how we could uh, create some customised pieces for it, including how we might trace an object uh, or a picture that exists already that might then be added to this box. Uh, so let's start with the simplest thing which is adding a lid. Now adding the lid is pretty much the same as what we did previously for adding the base. Uh, we already have the shape of the box and of course each of these is a component. Uh, and that's important because when we now go to draw on the top of this, we can just draw a rectangle that covers across the entire top. And it's not going to be affected by these pieces because they are components. So let's do that first. We're going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to use the corner point here and just go straight across to the corner point on the other side. And I have made a full piece. And I know that's a piece because if I try to select it, you can see it's shaded all the way around. It's a little bit of a glitching in my my um, screen but it is shaded all the way around. If I now take my push pull tool and I again try to pull that up you can see I have one solid piece. Now the amount that we're going up will depend on the material you are using. In the case of this particular box we've been using two materials so far and that is the 12 millimeter wide that we've used for the frame and the three millimeter that we've used for the base so far. So unless you've been told something different, they would be some good measurements to start with. So I'm gonna go with 12 millimeters and you can see I typed it and it's shown up down here at the bottom and I'll press enter to create that lid piece. And essentially that is now sitting on top of my frame. I wanna make this a component but I'm not going to just grab and select it because if I do that and if I was to rotate a bit, you'll see that I've also chosen pieces from behind and that's not what I want at all. So again, another reason why making components is useful is I can easily select each of these components and hide them really quickly because again, each one uh, is made up of all those individual pieces, sorry, and it makes it super easy to hide these so that now when I select everything, and right click to make a component which we will call lid uh, which I already must have made one once before so I'll call this lid uh, top for a minute and that'll make sense in a second uh, what I'm about to do but I've now made a new piece and I can very easily bring back all my hidden pieces by choosing little glasses over on the right here and just saying unhide all and you can see they've all come back okay now, the reason I call this lid top in the end, apart from I must have already made one before and forgot to delete it, is that I want to think about how this lid's going to stay on. Because essentially, if I take this and think about it, I've got a lid that essentially would slide off because it's literally just sitting on top of these edges. So what I actually think I might do is hide this piece I just made, and I'm going to do something very similar. I'm going to make a piece that would sit inside this gap which will be attached to the lid and essentially make it something that can't move side to side. So I'm going to do something very similar. This time I'm going to draw another rectangle but I'm going to use the inside positions and this time I'm going to push it down. Again you can't see it. Maybe what I'll do before I push it down, maybe what I'll do is hide this front one so we can see what's going on. So now that I've drawn the rectangle hide the front so you can see and I'm going to push this down and just like before I'm going to push it down by 12 millimeters for now because that's a piece of material I know I can use and I've got another piece there so what I now have if I bring everything back so let's bring these back in again hide I'm uh, sorry unhide all is a box with a lid but if I just hide this front one again so we can see inside you can see I've got this lid with an internal piece that basically locks inside. Now what I'm gonna do is, just like before, I'm going to hide everything else all the way around. And I'll hide the base just for the sake of it. I'm even gonna hide the top lid that I made before, because I just wanna make this as a piece as well, because I'm thinking of components as individual pieces that I would cut out. So let's make this the component, and I'll call this lid. Uh, base, all right, or lid bottom, let's call it that actually. So we call the other one lid top. Okay, so it's its own component. Let's bring back the things that we've hidden. 
Um, but now what I want to do is, let's hide the front again, just so we can see. I want to grab the top lid and, so I'm pressing the shift to add in multiple selections, the inside of the lid. And I'm going to make those two their own new component. So it's a group. I could do a group, but I still like to call it a component. So let's call this uh, lid together. I would have just called it lid, but again, as you saw before, for some reason, mine's remembering that I made a lid earlier. So that's now its own new component. So let's uh, bring everything back so we can see. Uh, let's bring back everything. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to use the, um, the move tool to kind of simulate what my lid will do. So here is my lid. And if I use the move tool just to uh, pretend, that's my lid. It's going to lift up and down and this inside piece is going to lock inside there okay so that is how i'm making my lid now i'm going to need one more thing with my lid and that's going to be some sort of handle to lift it up so i'm going to do a very simple handle for the moment i'm going to draw um, a handle just a cylindrical handle right there in the middle okay so the way i'm going to do that at the moment is i'm going to first of all make sure that i'm editing this, uh, the the um, lid basically um, and I'm going to draw with some construction lines I'm going to draw a construction line that goes across from corner to corner and another one from corner to corner that's going to give me my exact center which is very very important for what I want to do I'm then going to take my circle tool which I found and again if you didn't have it already selected recently you'd come into your dot 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 and find it there and I'm going to use the fact that circles start by drawing from the center i'm going to draw out from that center mark that i made okay and i'm going to give that a radius of let's make that 10 for now okay so i've got a circle and again because that is a circle i can grab that and i can pull that up again i'm going to stick with measurements that i know so i'm going to stick with 12 uh, millimeters as my thickness for my piece and i've now made a little handle that can sit on top and it's directly in the center uh, from there, I'm going to take my rubber and rub out these lines. We call them construction lines because I don't need them. And I can select that. Sorry, I want everything that's there. So again, I'm probably going to have to hide a whole lot of stuff. So let's hide everything that might get in the way. Um, and hide that one for a sec. It's enough to grab just the um, piece there. Okay, that looks good. Uh, actually, I might not need to do that. Let's just try that again. Uh, bring back everything. Where is my unhide all happening? Just give me one sec. Sorry about that. I was having trouble unhiding because I forgot that when I actually hid them, I was editing the lid component. Uh, so therefore, when I was trying to click outside of it and unhide, it didn't know how to do that, but what I was trying to show is I now have my handle, and if I tried moving my lid away, as if I lifted it up, you can see the handle piece is staying with it. Okay, so that is a good start. I've made a, a lid and handle piece, and these are all now accurate sizes and something that I could, in fact, cut out or ask someone else to cut because everything I need is there. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to add a little image to this and I want to be able to create that image in a 3D way. So what I'm actually going to do is take a picture that I found online and I'm going to essentially trace the outside of it so I can create a shape that I can then turn into a 3D um, that I might cut out for example with a piece of equipment like a laser cutter or a bandsaw or even just a, a coping saw or something and in the end I'm actually going to stick the real picture on top because it's going to look nicer but I want it to stand out from the box a little bit. So the way I'm going to do that is first of all I'm going to import something. So I'm going to go up to my menu and go import from my device or it might be on your OneDrive. I'm just going to do this now because I'm obviously not going to uh, show all my files to you on the video but I'm going to drag one in here just give me one moment okay so again I'm going to drag in a PNG file that I found or you could go search your device for the picture and I'm going to tell it is an image that I'm bringing in and you can see it's attached to my uh, cursor at the moment I could bring it wherever I want but I'm just going to put it flat over here um, and when I put it down, it's sort of letting me size it. So I'm just going to make an approximate size. And there we go. I've got this flat picture now. Now, again, it doesn't really matter about the size too much. It's obviously bigger than I probably want. I just need something I can start tracing. 
So the way I'm going to do this, I'm actually going to hide the entirety of this box for a minute. So I just sort of selected everything. I'm just going to hide it just so I can focus on this. And because this is flat on the, um, the red plane, I'm also going to change my view. So I'm going to go from the uh, views, not there, sorry, I always get this wrong. Um, find the right view so i always forget it's actually the little clapper down here i'm gonna look directly from the top just to make it a bit easier uh the other thing i might do is i might just rotate this a little bit so i'm going to use my rotation tool i'm just going to grab a corner to another corner and i'm just going to rotate it i'm just going to get it sort of more straightish it's just going to help me a little bit i think with uh with my drawing for now okay so there we go that's what i'm looking for now if i look at this shape that I have really what I've got is a half circle here another half circle here and sort of an oval shape that makes up the overall shape of this lolly that I want to use uh, and in case you haven't guessed my box is going to be a box for storing lollies on my desk so let's think about how I might do this so first of all we can do circles now we know that circles start from the middle so if I just zoom in a bit and look for roughly the middle of this um, this edge here and draw a circle that's about what I want um, I can move it over a little bit and now the reason it's getting locked is because of my um, my grid size basically which I might need to change it give me one moment I'll just be back with you in a second okay so the problem with not being able to line up exactly where I want is in my information for the whole project I have this snapping interval. It's basically saying how much uh, between each snapping point. I've got that set to one millimeter by default. Let's make that 0 0.1 millimeter so I can be more accurate. And what I'll do is take away that circle I tried to draw and let's try that again. So hopefully I can get a more accurate point. You can see yeah, much more accurate about being able to get where I want. So let's try and draw that circle in again. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's around that. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose that circle, okay, and then I'm going to use something called scale. So the easiest way I find to get scale, I'm not sure why it's not in the menu to be honest, but if I use the little help up here and type scale, you can see it comes up. In fact, it should work with the S key apparently, we can try that later. But what I'm going to do is I've now got these handles that I can basically pull to try and adjust this a little bit more. And again, the snapping might be a little issue, but we're just going to get sort of reasonably close to what I want, around about there, if I shrink it down a bit, and then I can try moving it down as well. So that's pretty good, all right? Now, because I know that one's okay, um, I'm gonna end up copying it down here, but let's cut it in half. So if we now take that circle again, and we draw just a normal pen line across, so we'll take our pen tool, and draw a line around about where it should be across the, the center there. Oh, that didn't draw very well, did it? Let's try that again, straight across. It was doing nicely until it got to there, then it's cut, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect for now. That's cut that in half, so I can basically cut out half of that circle, and you can see that's actually nowhere near where I want it. So let's try that again. I'm gonna do a better line. I'm gonna put that line more like here apparently. Now again, it doesn't have to be perfect because if we decide we want to adjust this a little bit, we can always trim this down later on. I'm just trying to get something approximately where I want. So that's gonna be a bit better there, I think. Yeah, that's not too bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that, paste it in over here and I'm going to rotate that one around. I'll just grab the corners and rotate it around so it's facing the other way and then put it down the bottom. I mean, I could obviously just redraw it, but I've already sort of done it once. Let's not do the work twice. And then finally, I'm also gonna draw another circle. Now this one's gonna be a bit trickier. Uh, again, we're gonna start from roughly the middle and draw something about as long as we want, give or take. Um, again, we're going to use that scale. Let's try pressing S, see if it works. So we've got to select the object first, which is the circle, press S, no. Now, because it's cut through, it's actually done this in two separate pieces. So let's maybe undo that for a second. Let us instead draw a circle to the side here. 
roughly the size we want. Let's then scale that one. So we'll select it with our selection tool. Scale. Let's make it look more like the shape we're trying to do. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and we can then move it across into that space after we stop scaling, that is. So let's move. There we go. And put it in there. Okay, so we're getting closer. Finally, uh, what we're going to do is see where we've got this overlap. We're going to take our selection tool and just remove the parts we don't need. So it becomes one shape. Now this is not perfect. Um, in actual fact, what I probably would have done is done two half circles here and here with straight lines joining. That would get a better oval than what we, we had, but I hope you're getting the general idea. Now because I've done all of that, I'm going to select everything there and group that as well. Um, I'm just going to make a group for a second and then I'm going to move that out of the way for a sec just to uh, get a better feel for where it is. In fact, I just realized what I do wrong, you might have actually noticed when I was doing it, uh, is that I grouped it with the picture at the back. So what I really need to do is grab that picture by itself, move it out of the way, and then come and select everything that made up the, um, the diagram. Oh, I just realized I undid that down there. So everything that made up the actual shape, and that's what I want to make into a group or component. Let's make a component, actually, lolly, and uh, we'll do that. Okay, so now I have a lolly that is a shape that can also be made three-dimensional because it's now an actual uh, shape in SketchUp. So double-click the component. Let's take that. And again, I'm only going to do this as a three millimeters, and I now have a lolly. All right. Um, finally, if I want, I can, in fact, move that to be on top of that eventually so we can bring that up and add it on top of it. We might do that later. Um, but what I do want to do is bring back my uh, box. So again, let's go to the view. Let's go to show all again. There's my lolly. Um, let's choose a whole lolly and let's actually scale that because it is quite large now. So let's bring that down quite a bit. Let's rotate it again. So I want to rotate it on not that axis. I'd like to rotate on this axis, actually, the blue axis. Because what I'm now thinking, actually, that I've seen this is let's make this part of the handle. So what I'm actually going to do is grab it. I'm going to move it up and try and add it on top of the handle. So I'm going to have to do some rotating, uh, trying to get this in the right spot. Um, but I can basically sit here and adjust this until this actually ends up being right where I want it, which is about there. And I've actually now made that, oops, into the handle of my box. Probably a good idea to choose that as well as the rest of the box. So plus to choose together. And let's uh, just make that a group at the moment just to bring them all together. So if I was to move it again, everything moves together. Uh, so in theory, what I've done is I've added a lid that also has an internal part that helps lock it in place because it's not a hinge lid, it's a lift up lid. I originally started with a simple circle or cylinder to lift it up with, but then I've actually added something a little bit more interesting, which is a lolly shape because I tend to put lollies in it. Um, and then finally, as I said, I could potentially get this, um, this picture to sit on top there. It's a little fiddly to do, especially because I've resized, but I could do that. But that's something that I'd actually do in post um, producing anyway, I'd actually cut out the picture and stick it on there. But as far as making pieces, you can actually see everything that I now need. That's an idea of where you should be heading. I know this video took a little bit longer, mainly because of uh, doing that drawing on the side there, but these are some ideas that you might do. Now, you don't have to obviously do anything that I did now. Um, you do need a lid, but you might decide instead to make an uh, internal box that sits inside. You might want to put dividers in there. You might have shapes you want to cut out or add to any of the, the sides of this box. Um, you might want to put you know, smoothing on the corners. There's all sorts of things that you can do to this box. And the idea is that you try to model those here so that, first of all, you get an idea of what is possible. Secondly, you know what size and shape of materials you might need. And thirdly, truthfully, 
although modeling is not exactly the same as cutting out in real life, it gives you an idea of the steps that might be needed. Certainly, for example, the lid, we know we have to cut a top piece, we have to cut an internal piece, we're going to cut this cylinder, and we're going to then have to cut out this shape for the lolly as well, and then they're all going to get joined together. So we've sort of simulated some of the steps that would be done in real life. So I hope um, that gives you some indication of what you need to do to complete this design. Uh, you do have to have it completed before you can finish building in my class anyway. Uh, but have a go, have a play, uh, see how far you get, see if you get stuck, then please ask for some help. Don't leave it to the last minute, of course, but by all means, ask for some help to you know, get through the stage that you're doing. But you definitely need a lid and you definitely need some form of decorative pieces as well, which can, as I said, be all sorts of things. It's open to your imagination.